the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. I want to go ahead and give you a quick uh, uh, synopsis of what we talked about today. And I, and I, I changed the topic because I've started off with the kind of topic called to be two types of churches, the those that obey Christ and those that disobey Christ. And I changed it more to line up with the scriptures so that people, if they're going to discuss it and debate it, they can at least line up with what scripture I'm coming from. And I'm coming from Romans chapter 8. I'm talking about verse 6. We're talking about being being caught in the mind of spiritual light. So this is what I want to do, and and because what I've seen so much, and I think most of them agree now, we have become so comfortable. You know, I can't say we have, because I see based on history that we have done card we've been acting on the cardinal flesh and cardinal reality for a very long time. But it's called two types of Christians, spiritual mind and cardinal mind. That verse that goes to that is Romans 8, 6. So when you talk to your pastor and you talk to your minister, you talk to your fellow believers, you ask you, you what I want you to do is assess whether you are cardinal. Are you cardinal Christians? And then what I do encourage you to do, what we talked about today was Google, go do word search, go to the library, have you want to say, look up the atrocities first of religion, religious people or religion and how much religion has uh, driven people to do mass killing and murders and torture and some very inhumane things. And then if you want to talk about the, the, the our Christianity itself, then you go and look up look up the atrocities of Christians and you'll see that we, we got to, and you know it, starting from the crusade all the way to the transatlantic slave trade, all the way to the slavery all the way through the Jim Crow laws and all those things and all the way to this day we see where people have dehumanized people to justify the behavior. Now we're seeing it even between political parties where somebody is sitting there just because you're part of this party uh, we're going to hurt you, we're going to kill you, we're going to dehumanize you. Both sides to a degree but one side in particular is really putting down uh, a lot of rhetoric of talking about physically hurting somebody. Uh, even in Christianity, we talked about the fact that the evangelicals and so forth talking about abortion with the with the the inciting people to go blow up abortion clinics and and then put uh, pregnant women or women who commit abo ador uh, abortion put them in jail. You know, it, it's just a lot of things that people would do in the name of their faith, their religion, and in our case, Christianity. So we need to fit there and say, do we need to operate and try to deal with things from the cardinal level or from the spiritual level? You know, God is the spirit in John 4, 24. God is the spirit, and those who worship him must worship his spirit in truth. And we've been called to preach the good news, not be militant. And we talked about the fact is that even uh, Christianity did not start off, nor is it nor are the teachings of Christ about violence. But when Rome took over and the church was accepted as the state religion, it became a banner also to be more militant. And that's where the crusade came in. And the viciousness and the, the, the terrible thing that was done in the crusade, look it up and read it for yourself. We, as believers, we, it's time for us to let our light shine and show people who are the real Christians. Meaning, and I'm talking about spiritual Christians. We have spiritual-minded Christians, not cardinal-minded. So real quick, I want to go ahead and read the, uh, the scripture I'm coming from, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and get into the study. So right here, like I said, two types of Christians, spiritual-minded and cardinal-minded, coming from Romans 8, 6. But let's go ahead into those scriptures. I want to read it real quick. Uh, it's like this. Romans 1, 8, I mean, Romans 8, 1, all the way to 8, 6, is what I like to read as, as the foundation where I'm coming from. He said, there therefore no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus, walking after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and it was weak to the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, listen y'all, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the date on the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Now, what I'm trying to say, if you look at what we just read, and you go back and read it for yourself, all the things from the lynching, all the things from the slave trade, all the things from the crusade, all the things leading them to the day. If you call yourself a Christian, if you use any cardinal weapons, any fleshly tools to try to make somebody be a Christian, to try to make somebody line up to be righteous, to make somebody to be what you think they're supposed to be as far as being holy, you can't do it because cardinal tools does not make you holy. Is only the spirit, the righteousness of Christ that's given to you as a gift. And if it's given to you as a gift, and the only thing for other people to do is receive the gift or continue to be what they are. But you are not cardinal. Remember that, amen? I hope you enjoyed the study. And listen to these introductions more than anything else because that's what we're trying to come to. Let's stop being cardinal Christians and let's stop being spiritual Christians. Amen? God bless you. God loves you. I will go ahead and make the, uh, the session available next, buy them up in uh, A, B, and C, and D. And also, I'll go ahead and make sure that you uh, get these out as soon as possible for you can digest them one day at a time or every other day. And also, remember this, subscribe. And, and make comments, too. I'll receive them. I, I mean, at least I'll, I'll read them. <laughs> God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. And if you don't grasp those two key points, point of not perishing, and we ain't talking about your lifespan, your physical lifespan, we're talking about your soul. And we all talked about it, right? We're talking about soul winning. How many people do you have to get saved? Saved from what? Saved from condemnation. Saved from damnation, right? I mean, that is that what we talk about? Is that what, what it's all about? Is the fact of eternal life, right? Because you talk about everlasting life. I mean, that is the basic concept or purpose of coming into Christianity. You know, I, I talk to one of my friends, and he, he's talking about the fact is you don't know. And, and the fact is, I want to throw even at him today, <laughs> my friend, hope you listen to it, is that's what faith is about. Faith is not based on no. Faith is based on belief. And the, the in our case, or those who call us Christians, is believe in the doctrine of Christianity, of Christ, right? We believe. That God, John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's what our faith is in. Our faith overall is in God who sent his son, who also sent the Holy Spirit. So we don't know, we, we don't operate based on the no. We operate based on faith. The Bible said that the just shall live by faith. People, the just shall live by faith. For we walk by faith, 
not by sight. And maybe to make sure people understand, we're not operating in an absolute, no kidding, got it. The answers are with us. The answers in our faith for what we believe. But you, you, as far as the, the, the life itself, outside of the gospel, outside of our faith in God, we don't have all the answers. As far as the, the, the eternal life, that's by faith, not by knowing. That's by faith in God, faith in the word of God. That's what we have faith in. That's what we live by. Because the Bible said to live by faith. If you know, then it's not a faith. You don't need faith that I have a, 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 a blue light color shirt on. You don't, need, you don't need faith for that. You can see with your senses. If you can determine things with your senses, that's not based on faith. It's only when you operate in faith if when you accept things, you accept by faith the word of God, our Christian doctrine. And and you know, and at the same time, and he, he's absolutely right, one of my friends, it's not for us to put down people who don't uh, have our faith. It's, it's, it's our responsibility to love them and demonstrate as ambassadors for Christ what, why we believe in what we believe in and why we have faith in what we have faith in and why we operate in what we operate in. Hey, Brother Addison, how you doing? All right. I was sitting there um, talking the, the title. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Because we really need to get down to the, 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 the I guess, the real crux of the matter, which is two types of Christians. Those who obey Christ and those who obey, disobey Christ. And I really should have said, I really mean to copy that and say, can I probably change it? Sorry, guys. Those who obey Christ and those who obey man. Uh, two different ones, you know? Because a lot of cases, Many people have been led astray based on what people say, what people feel, not what Christ says. You know, maybe I leave it as is, disobey Christ. That way, we, we it's determined. Obviously, if you're not obeying Christ, right, you you obey something. You may be obeying something else, uh, either yourself or people, right? You know. Yeah, but how can they be Christ-like if they're not obeying Christ? I know, that, but it so can be. There may be two types of Christians. There's either a Christian. Or not a Christian. <laughs> or those who. Well, they, they, they got people, you know, like the thing about the scripture says the sheep, I mean, the wolves in sheep clothing. Mm -hmm. Right? They, and, and, and even it said Satan himself tried to be like a light, right? An angel light, right? They, it's, it's the facade that people can put on. It's the title that people can put on. But, the, you know, the scripture is going to say the tree is known by, uh, again, uh, unstable. I hope it don't go away. Uh, it's, it's the tree is known by its fruit, not based on its title. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to make sure people say, are you obeying, are your fruits lining up with Christ? or your fruits are lining up with man, or with yourself, or carnality, or something else, or the devil. Because I remember, I like that that, that, that Romans, uh, John 8, what Christ was talking about, you, you can't understand my speech, because yeah. <laughs> you, your father, you got, you got a different father, man. <laughs> your father is the devil, and therefore you, you don't understand where I'm coming from. And that's what I, I, I think a lot of people, and then I also brought up about Peter, where Peter said, you are, the, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Christ said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my father from heaven. And then a few verse later, when Christ was saying is that the son of man has to be crucified, but he will rise again the third day. Peter was like, no, I don't want to hear that. 
homeboy, I'd rather die with you. You yeah. ain't nothing to happen to you because I, I, I got your back. I got your back, right? And Christ, and Christ turned around and looked at him and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. Yeah. And, and, and when we're talking about two, and man, I guess we can really work that title, <laughs> put that scripture, put that title, the fact is, are you mindful of the things of God? Or are you mindful of the things of man? That's a better title. Yeah, it isn't it? Right. Because that, that, that's what, because I, and the reason I'm bringing it up, because a lot of the things that uh, I was, I, I looked at the history, by the fact, let me see if I can bring that up real quick. I, I was I was going through, and I, I I left. I took one part off because it's it's when you when you look at it, it's it's so it's so things that uh, make you feel bad, right? I can talk with you. You sometimes you it feels bad when you look at some of the things that people have done in this country, and and, uh, and so I took them out. I took out the atrocities. I just told what I what I'm saying is for people. And I'm encouraging, and I know you have done it already many times. If, if, is Google people, research people, go look at the history of the church. Uh, the, well, the people that call themselves the church and, and, and check their history out. Uh, what I did, first of all, I put in there, I put Islam and, and Christian militarism, because that's the point I'm trying to say. The doctrine of Christianity is not about being militaristic. Not not the doctrine of Christianity. Uh, but we got here the in November, uh, this one article is written, it says, the period of the Crusades, those Christian military positions commissioned by the church to wrestle the, the Holy Land out of the Islam and Jewish, and look, and Jewish people. There were Jews during the crusade. There were Jews in the Holy Land. And, and the Catholic Church commissioned, or I guess we can't say Catholic. Let's get now. The, the Christian Church commissioned a military to go and seize the Holy Land. Uh, I, I think it finally, they finally got, was successful at one point, but even the Jews today, the Jewish people today, and the Jews that are indigenous to that area, uh, remember the atrocities that the Crusade did. They were brutal. They they were coming like, uh, if you ain't in Christ, you you <laughs> you dead. Yeah. You know, and uh, they really did some bad atrocity. And none of that, and I think you agree with me, none of that line up with the doctrine of Christianity. No, it, it doesn't. That's 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 a gross misunderstanding of God's will. Exactly. Because then, his 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 will was not to to conquer the world in that manner. He his will was to conquer the hearts. Exactly. This it's called the good mind. news, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said, "Go preach the good news." Not, not you got a sword over my head. That is not the good news, you know. Uh, Force like, you to, to to love. Yeah, and that goes with the Spanish Inquisition. Same yeah, thing. Spanish Inquisition was ride or die. You ride or die. What you 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 gonna you gonna go our way, or you going the highway? And the highway was we're gonna kill you. Uh, mm -hmm. Very brutal. Very brutal. Uh, it says, right, it said, when did Christianity gain power? And and I think that's where when we talk about, and I was talking about the church history, and I, and I encourage you to look up church history. Look it up, please. And don't just look at, look at the, I'd say look up the church atrocities. That's probably a better word for you. Um, yeah. But when it came into uh, power, it was in, when the Romans made it the, state religion they try and people most no people forget about the fact is that Rome tried to wipe christianity out uh they they did everything they when they they would come up to burning books or banning books they used to find any manuscripts of the gospel and they would turn they just tore it up burnt it trying to stamp it out that's where they had the arena 
That's where they had the lions going in and eating them up and putting them at the stakes and burning them alive. And, and they just was holding on to their faith. They weren't, they weren't attacking the Romans. They were, they were just trying to operate in their own faith. And the Romans thought that was a threat. You know, so in 3 AD, 313 AD, the Emperor Constantine issued an edict of Malayan which accepted Christianity. He accepted Christianity. 10 years later, it had become the official religion of the Roman Empire. Uh, matter of fact, Constantine, somebody was talking about that, a friend of mine was talking about the other day, Constantine sat there and, and had a vision that the, the Christian cross, even though he didn't describe the right cross, he yeah. sounded like he described the Onyx uh, from Egypt. Uh, but he was saying that will go before us into battle. You know, it, it's similar to the, like when the uh, Hebrews went into the promised land, one of the things that they felt victorious, will be victorious when they brought the ark with them, right? Oh, we got God with us, man. That, that, that ark represented the presence of God, right? So Rome started using the cross as their banner, what well, positive banner, because they had the eagle, that, you know, what they call it. But they, 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 their state of religion was Christianity. So that, that's time, I guess that's when Christianity started becoming more a militant or military-like uh, organization than a Christian organization. Matter of fact, this next one right here says, and this one, these two, uh, Parts here. One is talking about the doctrine. Said, so what is what is one Christian teaching about the use of balance, right? And, and and that's talking about the doctrine itself. This is a summary of it, but it's a doctrine. It says Christianity teaches non-violence. If and those who listen to us right now, you're not going to find in the teaching of Christ the use of balance. That, that was never a teaching of Christ. I mean, the four gospels, just go by the, the four gospels, which talk about the teaching of Christ. It says, Christianity teaches nonviolence. As Jesus said, look at this, blessed are the peacemakers, right? So and the opposite of that is, blessed, not blessed are the, the war makers, but the peacemakers and told others to turn the other cheek in the face of violence. Uh, Christians are told to love their enemies and to love each other. That, that, that's a good summary of the teaching of Christ. And, and you'll get, especially in the, in, the, in the face of political parties today, we'll sit there and, 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 and denounce that teaching in different words without coming out and saying we denounce Christianity. But the, 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 the fight like hell, remember that, you know, one of them was saying, you gotta fight, you gotta fight like hell. Uh, and and on, on 6 January, uh, there was some Trump flags, there was a lot of Trump flags, we all agree with that. But did you see a lot of Christian flags out there? And, 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 those people holding a Christian flag, you need to understand whether you like it or not. My fact, it, did, do you think that lined up with Christ's doctrine? Now, I heard some men, some of the people that went out there that said when they saw all that stuff, they got up in the buses and left. You know, but a lot of them stayed there with the flag, <laughs> with the Christian flag, uh, long enough for the cameras to take a picture of them, swarming mm -hmm. the Capitol. They were swarming the Capitol all over the place and they had Christian flags there. And that's not the teaching of Christ. That's one of the fruits of the uh, cardinal flesh, right? Sedition. Remember that? What of a sedition? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they were participating in sedition. They were participating in what we call the big lie. The Bible said, Thou shalt not bear false witness. And yet you got people today, 50% of some political party, one political party, believe that the election was stolen despite the hand counts, despite the court hearings, despite even, even 
the the former president himself sitting there talking to to the Georgia Secretary of State by phone, recorded, <laughs> and said I heard five hundred thousand, five hundred people, five thousand people, five hundred thousand people voted. Dead people voted, and the man sat there and said, "What, Mr. President, your dad is wrong." He didn't argue. I thought the guy was very cool. I don't, you remember hearing that tape, right? I thought I thought he was very cool. He said, "Mr. President, your dad is wrong." He ain't gonna say you lied. He just, he just said, you got the wrong information. I haven't found 500,000 people or 5,000 people or 500 people. I haven't found 100 people, dead people in my name. You know I found, Mr. President? I found four. And they were by people that were from that they, And they voted for him. Yes. What type of church are you? I want to sit there and invite you to listen to the study carefully. And I also want to invite you to look up the history of religion. And I'm talking about look at the atrocities of religion. Look at the atrocity of the Christian church. Look them up because there's a lot. And why I'm saying that, the Bible says that a tree is known by its fruit. What fruit are you bearing? That's what we want to discuss. And, and keep in mind, you can always change, revert back, repent, and follow the will of God. So even if you have a history of bad things, you can always come back to the throne of grace. Because that's what the gospel is about. So I want you to take time, listen to the study, analyze it for yourself, and ask what type of church are you. We got to the point where we had to use, went to the book of Revelation to the church of Laodicea and what that church was like. And the question is, are you like that church? But if you believe and you want to believe, follow this will. He gave you the, he gave you the Lord's commandment so you can follow his will daily. Amen. All right. God bless you. I see you. Don't forget to subscribe. And, and I will break these down into segments A, B, C, D, and whatever it takes to finish it up. But I just want you to analyze it. And like I said, I just want to put out there to you. If you decide that you don't want to believe Christ, if you decide that you don't believe in eternal life, that's a choice you make. And we respect your choice because you make that choice. All we all tell you is that everyone will give, every, look, my scripture said by faith. That's all I can go by faith in his word. Is that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So you say now or say when you leave this world. That's up to you. God bless you, but I chose to do it now. Make that decision now. And I encourage everybody else to make that decision now as well. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the segment, the study that we did this Sunday on the 9th of July. And say, look, yes, sure, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.